Alright, today's video is specifically going to be on my interview experience for cybersecurity roles. For anyone who is currently looking for that first cybersecurity job, I know how intimidating these cybersecurity interviews specifically are, and it's even harder to prepare for, especially when you're a beginner and you don't really know what to focus on studying, and you may be applying for a wide breadth of roles because of the fact that you don't know exactly what role that you might want to go into yet. So hopefully this video can help you a little bit with how to prepare for your cybersecurity interviews, the resources that you can use, what to do if you get a question that you don't know, how I would prepare for a cybersecurity interview if I only had one week to prep and a bunch of other topics related to cybersecurity interviewing please consider subscribing to the channel it would really help me out a lot in getting this kind of content out to other people who are looking to get into cybersecurity so i prepare this video as kind of like a q a style format so it'll kind of be like you guys are asking me these questions while i'm answering them so the first question is how did you find your cybersecurity job so a super brief background i'm currently working as a security analyst i have about three and a half years of experience in cybersecurity i got my bachelor's degree in information science and technology and my first cybersecurity job that i got out of college was actually through a conference. So it's the Grace Hopper conference, a conference I talk about many, many times on this channel. I also vlogged my experience attending this year in person. So if I have posted that vlog, I will link that here. But essentially part of the conference is a career fair and there are companies that are looking to hire, especially for university grads. And I actually did the full interview for that cybersecurity role. It was a rotation program at the conference and the interview experience itself was primarily behavioral. Now, of course, this was very different from my second cybersecurity job search, which is basically after I left my first job where I worked at for about two and a half years. Years. It's crazy to think that I'm soon going to hit one year at my current job. Um, I think I'm about eight or nine months in right now and that already blows my mind. The time just flies by so quickly. But in terms of preparing for this cybersecurity job, I was a lot more focused on actually studying for my interviews. So while I wasn't going to start a full-blown job search, I actually started getting emails from companies from I think my previous resumes I put in into the Grace Hopper database uh, a year or two ago. And basically from there, I started scheduling interviews with companies just to kind of test out my interviewing skills, see how I could do. And at that point, I was applying for cybersecurity jobs as well as software engineering jobs and eventually I started taking things a little bit more seriously and started actually looking for a new role and then that's when I started just applying to different jobs on my short list which is a list of about 40 to 50 companies that I personally would want to work for. Um, I made this list back in college so obviously it's always going to be changing and iterating throughout my career as well as just the types of companies and sectors I want to go into. For example, companies I thought were my dream companies back in college are no longer my dream companies anymore. So Things like that are always going to change, but I try to keep that list kind of refreshed every year or so whenever I'm considering to look for a new job. Obviously, I'm not switching jobs every single year, but I'm just saying it's nice to kind of see what your options are every once in a while because let's face it, that's one of the big ways to kind of grow in your career, especially in tech, whether you're in cybersecurity or not. Now, I'm really starting to ramble, but basically, I just started to apply for jobs on their job portals as well as just using Google Jobs, um, Monster.com, Dice.com, Indeed, all those pretty common job search websites. And that was basically how I found my current job, just applying online. I didn't really have that many resources at my fingertips since I no longer use LinkedIn But when I used to use LinkedIn I also used to kind of use the LinkedIn messaging tool to talk to recruiters as well as just have recruiters reach out to you Which is very convenient as well as just applying to jobs on LinkedIn But obviously I no longer have that avenue at some point I may reactivate my LinkedIn again But the next question is what was your cybersecurity interview experience like? So I'm going to specifically talk about my cybersecurity interviews for my second job search because the first one Because it was so primarily behavioral and just going through my resume talking about my previous projects I don't think it'll be very helpful to you guys to just talk about that one, but specifically for my cybersecurity interviews for my second time around doing job searches, I probably did about one to two interviews a week and that was already a lot for me. Some of my interviews were an hour, some of my interviews were back to back. And for some companies, I didn't even make it past the recruiter screening to the first round. So there's always going to be a wide breadth of experiences when you're interviewing. So definitely don't let that rejection get to you. If you are interviewing and maybe and maybe the first five that you do, you don't really get anywhere with them. That's completely normal. Don't worry about it. Everyone is going to have that experience. And I really think it's just normalizing rejection at this point, especially just hardening yourself for interviews and just how they go. Because even now, I really feel like as a cybersecurity candidate, you still have a lot of leverage in terms of the types of roles that you can get because so many companies nowadays are still hiring for cybersecurity talent because they just can't find the talent out there. So specifically for my cybersecurity interview experience, I had most of my interviews had about two to three rounds of interviews. Most of them were technical, some of them had behavioral, but a lot of the behavioral ended up being part of that recruiter screening, that initial one. Um, usually it's a recruiter reaching out to you and asking you a few questions about your background, what you're looking for, basically just testing the waters to see if you're a good match for the company. And to move you up to the first round of the interviews of the interview cycle and usually for that one there isn't necessarily technical questions that they're going to ask you i mean i'm sure there are technical recruiters out there who are going to ask you what a hash map is and things like that but for the most part they're probably just going to ask you kind of like those initial pre-screening questions as well as just 
getting to know a little bit more about your background and seeing if you're a good fit for the hiring manager. And after that, my experience for the first round interviews, sometimes the companies tell you who you're interviewing with ahead of time, which is very helpful. For example, one of my interviews was with this person who was actually highly published in the in the cybersecurity space. Um, I've actually read articles about her specifically, and I already knew that she was very big in her area, a very big subject matter expert. So that one definitely intimidated me a little bit because obviously with only two and a half years of experience just starting out, I wasn't sure how I was gonna do in that first interview. Even though it wasn't the final round interview, I knew it was gonna be pretty technical and it was. So basically I started off with general cybersecurity questions about encryption, about system hardening, about general cybersecurity topics, things like network security, um, encryption, securing applications and types of malware and things like that. I would say those are pretty typical cybersecurity concepts that you probably have learned in school or in your bootcamp. If you're someone who already had the foundations of cybersecurity, I can definitely tell that these were meant for early career, these questions that I was being asked. Now, obviously I don't remember the exact topics, but, but they were basically around those specific areas as well as my other cybersecurity interview experiences. A lot of them did happen to be cybersecurity general concept questions, but these again, tend to be the questions to be kind of like, you know it or you don't. If someone asks you the port number for RDP or remote desktop protocol, then it's either you know it or you don't. It's not something that you just, it's not something that you can kind of make up um, on the spot. If you don't know that information, then you don't know it. So I do think that's the tricky part about cybersecurity interviews but needless to say there are some cybersecurity interviews where I got through the first round and there are some cybersecurity interviews where I didn't get through even the first round and there are others where I made it to the final round and there are others where I made it to the final round and actually got an offer so it all really varies and these are all for the same level of roles where they're looking for one to two years of experience and basically we're suited for someone in their early career and I do want to shout out my new course on how to get your first job in cybersecurity and this course is going to give you everything that you need and everything I personally use to get that first job in cybersecurity from interview prep to career guides to my resume and cover letter templates it includes 10 video modules on just the entire job search process and getting your foot in the door for that first job which typically is going to be the hardest to get in cybersecurity and after that I promise it gets a whole lot easier because you have that first cybersecurity experience on your resume. You can check out the course linked in the description below and I'm so excited to hear you guys' feedback as well as your job search experience. But in general, I would say that all of my interview experiences for the most part were pretty positive. People aren't necessarily trying to grill you on the interview, um, but they do want to know kind of the depth of your experience. For example, for one of the companies I interviewed for, the recruiter actually had a interview prep call with me where they went over little tips and tricks, which was actually really helpful. But basically the gist of it was the fact that they know that I'm not gonna be able to answer every single question, but they want to see the extent of how far I can answer. For example, if someone asks me about authentication, but then they wanna know how deep I can go and how in depth that I can talk about it in a normal one-to-one -one conversation with the interviewer. They're not necessarily looking for like me to answer a specific question perfectly the way that they were the way that they want me to word things but they're just looking at how deep my knowledge goes in certain areas so just knowing that in general can really help not psych you out as much for your cybersecurity interviews because again they're not expecting you to know everything especially in your early career and now i do want to go into how i prepared for my cybersecurity interviews so you guys have probably heard me say this time and time again but i prepared for my interviews specifically using the exam study guide for my comptia security plus certification that i took two years ago now. The CompTIA Security Plus is the certification that definitely changed the trajectory of my career. I think that definitely helped me also get my, my current job in cybersecurity, but it was also my first time diving deep down into cybersecurity foundational knowledge that because I wasn't a cybersecurity major in college, nor did I take a cybersecurity bootcamp, I was an IT major. So obviously I didn't have that much of a foundational background, except a few network security and digital forensics courses that I took in college. So taking the Security Plus just helped fill in the gaps of everything else that I didn't know of before and CompTIA also has a exam prep guide. It's basically just a list of 600 or so vocabulary words that are going to be tested on the Security Plus exam and, and basically what I did to prepare and study was go through all those words on that study guide and the study guide is completely free. Um, you can find it just on the CompTIA website. I'll try to link it down below if I can find the list, if I can find the exact official list that I use. But basically I went down the list, went through all of them that maybe I didn't remember or wasn't as clear on and then looked into them, googled, maybe watched a 10 minute YouTube video on the topic, went through my own security plus notes re-memorize all of my all of my network ports and protocols which is something that i which is something that always ends up slipping my mind especially when i haven't looked at them in a while i'm definitely not the best at hardcore memorization long term but yeah the security plus exam prep guide was probably one of the biggest reasons how i was able to prepare successfully for my cybersecurity interviews especially for your early career because sometimes you don't know exactly what to study and sometimes you can go too down the rabbit hole of 
for example, authentication, and sometimes those teeny tiny details aren't worth picking up as much as the other broader areas of cybersecurity, especially for entry-level interviews because they may not even ask you a question on authentication and you might waste a few hours just studying that topic. So you just want to be mindful about your time and that's why I think following a study guide, certification study guide is helpful because knowledge, first of all, is just very, very broad and it just kind of keeps you in check for the pace of study that you need to do. And as part of my course that I previously mentioned, I do have my interview prep guide that I used. So I'll link that below if you guys want to check that out. You can also get the interview prep guide separately on my career resources website as well. All right, next question is if you have one week to prep, or your cybersecurity interview, what would you study? So first things first, definitely the Security Plus study guide. Memorize all those words and try to know at least something about every single concept on that list. And a lot of them do tie together, so you don't have to worry about so you don't have to worry about memorizing every single thing down to the T. I would spend the first four days of the week studying that, and then the next two days preparing specifically for cybersecurity design questions. This is something that I've talked about before. So if you have any experience with system design questions, security design questions are something similar, but specifically from a cybersecurity perspective, where they give you a problem pretty much open-ended and they ask you, for example, how to secure this web application, what would you do? And the question is so open-ended that anything you say, that basically you can say whatever you want, you can go whatever route that you want to do, you can secure it however you like, but obviously these questions are more so to give the interviewer an idea of how deep that you can go again. So so I would prepare for cybersecurity design questions, even though you may not get them in every single interview, it's still very helpful to know, plus it helps you with those general cybersecurity questions that you're gonna get anyway. For example, things like how to secure an application, how to harden a server, what to do during a security incident, what tools or apps would you use to secure, to secure your company's network? These are all just very open-ended questions, which of course is a good and a bad thing because there usually isn't going to be a wrong answer because you're at least going to know some way to secure an application, some way to harden a server. But again, the double-edged sword is the fact that the interviewer may be looking for a specific level of understanding that can show them that you have this amount of knowledge in this specific area. So I'll go on YouTube and I will look up security design questions and, and even just general topics like the ones I mentioned, for example, how to secure a web application, how to secure a mobile application. And of course, the type of role that you're applying to can also give you an idea of the types of situations or security design questions that you're going to get. If you're going into a junior network engineering role, then you're probably going to be getting asked some kind of questions on securing a network. And then from there, the last one or two days that you have to prepare for that cybersecurity interview, I would spend it just looking specifically on some sample questions for the role that you're applying to. There may be some example ones on Glassdoor. Obviously, don't look at these and think that these are the exact questions they're going to ask you because if they're on Glassdoor, the company already knows that it's public and it's out there, so they're not going to ask you them again. But it is a good way to kind of get an idea of the types of questions questions, the format of the questions that you might get, as well as just sample questions that you can find online for cybersecurity entry-level interviews. There are many lists out there that give you an example of the types of interview questions that are going to be asked in cybersecurity, and those questions are very helpful. Usually they have lists of like 50, 100 at a time, so you can go through all of them and kind of see where your gaps are. Maybe you notice that you're missing some knowledge in encryption, or maybe in the types of malware, and those are the ways to get your knowledge a little bit more well-rounded. And I know this sounds like a lot for a one-week study session, and I know that many of you guys are still in school, maybe you're still in a bootcamp program, maybe you're currently working a part-time or full-time job, maybe you have family obligations. There's a lot going on that is probably going to keep you from being able to study fully for your cybersecurity interviews, but really just do the best that you can. If you have an interview coming up in one week, this is the plan that I would follow. But, but of course, if you need more time, you should always schedule your interviews for at least two weeks out because I feel like that's the best time, especially if you haven't studied at all. Obviously, once you start studying and um, have all your foundations down. I like to kind of group all my interviews together so I don't have to restudy the same material over and over because let's face it, sometimes that information just slips out of your brain. It's in your short-term memory most of the time. So you're not gonna remember it for months and months. If your job search is going to extend that long, you really want to group them together so that you're able to get the most out of each study session. And then of course the topic of what to do if you get a question that you don't know. So even though cybersecurity concepts aren't the best concepts for interviewing because of the fact that sometimes it can be very black and white, you know it or you don't know it. Um, there are still times where when I get a question that I don't know, and believe me, there are many times when this happens during interviews. I'm sure even with 10 years of experience, there are people who, there are cybersecurity professionals who may not know an answer to a question because they just haven't worked in the field or it's just something that may be very niche. So don't be afraid if you don't know an answer to the question. It doesn't mean that you're out of the interview. It doesn't mean that you're not gonna get the job. But I would try to give as much color as you can about a specific topic. For example, if someone asks you, for example, if someone asks you about Kerberos and maybe you've heard of the term, but you don't know it exactly, but you know it has something to do with the authentication and authorization space. Even though you aren't able to answer the question specifically, specifically about Kerberos and, and the different steps involved and the different components involved, you should be as honest as possible with your interviewer. Honestly, is really the best policy. I think for interviewers, there's nothing worse than someone who is just BSing their way through a question and pretending like they know it because 
obviously the interviewer knows the answer to the question and they probably know it better than you do anyway so even if you're trying to explain it in a way where in a way where you don't know it and you're just kind of bsing around the way that can actually be a red flag to the interviewer that maybe you aren't willing to admit the things that you don't know the areas of improvement that you have so honesty is always the best policy i would tell them straight up hey i'm not really familiar with Kerberos, but i know it has something to do with authentication or authorization and these are the things that i do know about authentication whether it's sso or saml or different user sessions or using different session tokens like even though you aren't answering the question directly necessarily you're still able to give the interviewer some idea of what you do know even though it doesn't directly tie back to Kerberos you're still able to kind of redeem yourself you're still able to answer the question from the level that you can based on the knowledge that you know so definitely don't discount yourself and even if you don't know a question just try your best to answer it using the context of the background knowledge that you do have all right so hopefully this video helped you guys a little bit get the edge off for your next cybersecurity interviews i know especially for those of you who are currently graduating from a boot camp or a or university this is kind of the prime time to look for jobs starting next summer when you graduate and honestly the pressure is really on especially with so much going on in the economy and and the job search process in general hopefully sharing my interview experience kind of sheds some light on these types of topics that you may see and obviously these are all example topics and not the exact questions that you may get in a cybersecurity interview but hopefully they just gave you an idea of the types of things to study and honestly it's not as challenging as you think i really believe that after the first few interviews that you do you're going to quickly become a pro at answering these cybersecurity interview style questions as well as of course the behavioral questions that come along with it and for those of you who are currently looking for your first job in cybersecurity or looking to transition into the cybersecurity field you can check out my new course on how to get your first job in cybersecurity linked in the description below as well as all of my career resources thank you guys so much for watching if you like this video Video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!